Hi, so um, I'm recording this video to give you a glimpse of what we did in this project on machine translation and literary translation tasks. Um, so the project was carried out at the University of Bristol in collaboration with Kent State University um, in the US and also SDL, a partner on the project. So SDL is a provider of translation technologies and they helped us with um, the interface that we used in the project and also with the tool that we used to collect um, the data. So um, this was quite an exploratory project. We were basically interested in how um, machine translation would affect the work of literary translators when it was used as a source of assistance. So by machine translation, I mean the output of tools like Google Translate. Um, Using machine translation systems um, is fairly common in some sectors of the translation industry, but in literary translation, this is an emerging um, area of research. Um, in addition to machine translation itself, we were also interested in how um, different settings that you can choose to um, configure the editing interface uh, in translation tasks how these would affect uh, the work of literary translators as well. Um, and we are also interested in methodologies from creativity studies and the extent to which they could be applied to translation and also to the judgment of uh, different levels of creativity that um, w were reflected in the target translation. So we were interested in the spread of different possibilities in the translations generated in the project when machine translation was used and when it wasn't. So in the autumn of 2019, we turned into a client and we commissioned translations for the project. So there was a detailed process for selecting the source texts. Um, so we used short stories by Peter Watts, so science fiction short stories. Uh, these were available under a Creative Commons license um, and they were translated from English into simplified Chinese. So 15 professional translators took part in the project um, overall and we ran two studies. So in the first study, um, the translators basically translated the short stories with machine translation and without machine translation. And in the second study, we were interested in the text segmentation on screen. So they first saw this, they saw the short stories segmented at paragraph level and also at sentence um, level. So we counterbalance the order of presentation of the you know, different conditions in, in the usual way that you would normally do um, in experimental studies um, in, in psychology and other areas. So I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the methodology, um, but this will be available in the outputs that we're going to submit to. So this is the interface of a computer assisted translation tool. So um, these are very common sort of editing interfaces that professional translators use to produce their translations. So whereas most writers would use Microsoft Word, there, there's a type of tool that's specific for translating. So they're called CAT tools, so computer assisted translation. And uh, the reason why we use these tools in the study, um, well, this tool specifically, which is called Trado Studio, um, is because um, machine translation is now often um, offered as a source of assistance in computer assisted translation tools. So these tools don't offer just machine translation. Um, there's a, a range of sources of help and suggestion that translators can access in these tools, including sort of entries from electronic glossaries. You can run quality assurance verifications um, and so on. Um, but machine translation is an increasingly prominent type of assistance that you can get in these tools. So that's why um, we linked the study of machine translation itself and the editing interface. Um, what you see here is the interface that was used uh, when the stories were segmented at paragraph level. And also important to say, so we worked with SDL, um, which is the, the developer of this tool specifically, and we also used a plugin um, that records how translators work. So uh, the translators uh, taking part in the study 
um, collected the data themselves by installing the plugin and, and then generated reports um, that included things like how much they use the keyboard, their typing speed and, and so on. So we were then able to use that data afterwards to get a glimpse into how they worked and uh, the different conditions that we were interested in uh, in the study. So just for you to see the difference, this is what the interface looked like when the stories were segmented at sentence level. And here specifically, we're also looking at um, what the interface looked like, looked like in the condition where translators did not use machine translation. So the idea here is that they had to translate um, the stories from English to Chinese entirely from scratch without machine translation assistance. So after we received the translations, we um, appointed five expert judges to assess the translation's creativity based on a method that we borrowed from creativity studies. Um, we tried not to assume too much about this method other than exploring uh, the implications of applying it to the study of translation. Um, so it, it's quite an intuitive method um, in that it does not rely on any definition of creativity. Um, it relies rather on sort of the consensus of experts in the area or what experts in the area believe to be less or more creative products in, in that given area. Um, so the judges were very experienced literary translators who also had experience of assessing translations and they didn't know if the translations they were looking at had been produced with machine translation or without. So this was a blind assessment. So here are some of our findings. Um, first of all, there was almost no agreement at all between the judges on which were the more or less creative translations out of the translations produced in the project. Um, this was disappointing, but perhaps not surprising. Um, and I think it, it raised a number of questions that we're going to address in, in an output that we are planning to submit soon, um, which is basically going to be a discussion of how some of these um, creativity studies methodologies might and might not be applied or applicable to, to translation studies. Um, so we suspect that it's very hard not to conflate linguistic quality with assessments of creativity in this area. Um, so there's scope for um, discussing this further in the light of some previous attempts of looking at creativity in translation and different methodologies that can be used for that. Um, but setting that aside, um, even if we just averaged all the scores uh, returned by all five judges, there was no difference um, between translations produced with machine translation or without machine translation when we compared um, the scores that we um, got back. So we think that the overall finding here is that there are that there's more scope for methodological discussion of the possibility or feasibility of looking at creativity from an empirical perspective um, in, in translation. So there'll be more um, along that, those lines that we're going to be submitting soon. So um, based on the data that the translators collected um, with the plugin that was installed on the computer assisted translation tool, um, we were then able to compare how they worked in the different conditions we had in the study. Um, we used some mix effects modeling to look at this, which gave a little bit more power um, to these analysis, despite the fact that this is not a large sample. And we're still carrying out some of these analysis, but we have some preliminary uh, findings. Um, so when comparing the use of machine translation with translating from scratch, Using machine translation was faster, it involved fewer pauses when typing, and it also involved less keyboard use. Um, the result that we have for comparing just translating time was not statistically significant though. Um, now, when looking at the segmentation settings, so the, the different ways of segmenting the stories on screen, um, all the variables that we looked at indicated that segmenting the stories at paragraph level was less cognitively demanding. So there, there are a number of metrics that can be used to approximate 
um, cognitive processing. Um, and these have, you know, have been suggested in experimental psychology work and also um, empirical um, translation studies research. So the, the number of pauses in, in writing and in, in, in the use of the keyboard basically is one of these metrics that can approximate um, cognitive um, processing. So by looking at metrics like these, um, the paragraph segmentation seems to be um, the most suitable for literary translation based on these tasks. So um, we were, of course, also interested in the translations themselves and how they differed from each other. Um, so we use a number of um, toolkits that you can use to look at the spread of different possibilities or, or the spread of, of different versions in a set of translations that correspond to the same source text. Um, so the graph that you see on screen was produced with the VVV tool by um, Don Cheeseman at Swansea University, who very kindly helped us to set this up on his website. Um, so this basically shows here on the um, horizontal axis, the segments in the stories. And then the further apart the points are, um, the further apart the Chinese translations for that segment are to each other. So um, what we see here, for example, in this speak is this is a translation produced entirely from scratch without machine translation and it differed quite a lot from the other versions in this uh, for this source segment. Uh, corresponding to these versions here. This other uh, peak here was also produced entirely from scratch without machine translation. So these peaks provide some indication that in a few cases, not using machine translation actually made the translators deviate from the others um, a little bit more. But these were by and large isolated cases. Um, we didn't see consistent differences in the groups in the group of translations produced entirely from scratch and in the group of translators translations produced with machine translation in terms of how wide the spread of possibilities uh, were. So in other words, um, there was no evidence that machine translation shrank the, the range of possibilities or no evidence that machine translation limited translation translators in how um, they came up with different ways of rendering the, the source text. We, we also um, use the CRIT um, translation process research database um, to analyze um, the, the, the data that we had in the study. And one variable that you can get from this database is word translation entropy, which also looks at the range of possibilities for translating a word from a source language into a target language. And the results that we got there were, were similar to the ones that we observed in the VVV tool in that there weren't major differences in the spread of possibilities for text produced with machine translation and without. So as I said at the beginning, uh, we're still analyzing um, these results, but here's a summary of what we came across so far. So. No evidence to suggest that machine translation limited the work of literary translators. So it didn't shrink the spread of possibilities when it was used as a source of assistance and when it wasn't. Um, similarly, um, based on the creativity scores that we received from the judges, there was no difference um, between texts produced with machine translation assistance and without with the caveat that um, there's more scope here to discuss this methodology and how and whether it's applicable to the study of translation. Um, and lastly, uh, segmenting um, the stories at paragraph level uh, seemed to make more sense for, for literary tasks based on the results that we got. So here's basically who we are. Uh, this project would not have been possible without the help of a very long list of people, not least because we had to adapt uh, the code of some of the tools that we used. So huge thanks to everyone, um, and especially to the translators who took part in the project, the creativity judges, and of course, the creative multilingualism team.